specialist to actually demolish the Huddersfield Royal Infirmary, remove the A&E services and replace it with a smaller urgent case unit. There isn't the funding available for that unit as yet, so effectively we would have a, the hospital demolished and all our services removed to Halifax. It's a very awkward place to get to. It's a narrow road, mostly it's you know, nose-to-tail traffic. Uh, anybody trying to get there in a hurry, you know, you have the blue light flashing. There's, there is nowhere for the cars to go to. So you can be you can be on there for, you know, three quarters of an hour. People have had babies at the side of the road because they can't get to the uh, the maternity. Hands off HRI! Hands off HRI! Hands off HRI! Hands off HRI! The equipment they've got, the MRI scanner and all the x-ray facilities, it's second to none really. They want us to believe that it's on its knees and will cost more to repair and restore. That's contrary to what you see with your own eyes when you're there. I was in the, the day surgery unit with my daughter for um, a small grommet routine operation but I was amazed by how modern the facilities were and how uh, clearly money has been invested in, in that hospital. We are not alone in facing these cuts. Locally, Dewsbury Hospital is going to be downgraded. That means Kirklees will be without an A&E unit. This will only put more pressure on neighbouring A&Es. If the Tories have their way, more than one in six of all A&E departments will close, endangering people's lives. Our hospital is Trolley and South Ribble and we're linked to Lancashire Teaching Hospitals. They closed our A&E. We've been outside our hospital every Saturday, 10 till 11, every week for 55 weeks. We have managed to get our A&E back for 12 hours, 8am till 8pm. We are fighting to get it back 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I was a nurse for 33 years, worked for the NHS for the majority of that time, very, very close to my heart. Breaks my heart to see what is happening to our NHS because the NHS does belong to us, the people, doesn't belong to the government, whatever colour they are. It belongs to us. join together that demonstrates the point that it's not just a local issue this is a national picture and we want to support each other and also learn from each other and help um, campaign groups to go from strength to strength we've certainly learned from the successful Lewisham campaign and had their support and that has definitely helped us <laughs> Surgery in Slowit, uh, our health centre, has been threatened with massive cuts for the last 18 months. 44% um, has been threatened, which in effect would close it. It's part of the bigger plan to privatise the NHS and have super surgeries run by the likes of Virgin. They were actually told not to tell their patients that the cuts were imminent. Now, this has been going on up and down the country. We got together, patients in Slowit, and said we're not going to take this. Fortunately, our GP has spoken out about it and we've had no cuts. The threat hasn't gone away and that's why we have to keep campaigning. Oh, look at oh the there's a mega one. bevan. Oh, fantastic. The big bevan. The big one. Yeah. <laughs> These are the sheep and it, it came about, a lady, sorry, a lady found um, a pattern for crochet and knitted sheep and somebody came up with the idea that it, it would be good for us because we've got, we've got that, you see, I'm a bleating activist and we have a lot of sheep around the Corn Valley, etc. And then somebody came up with the idea of what knit Name, shall we call it? Well, Bevan, after an hour in Bevan, the founder of our NHS. So what could be better? A third of all NHS walking centres will close. We've already lost 12,340 hospital beds. Waiting lists are at a seven year high with 3.9 million people waiting for surgery. 60 ambulance stations have closed due to Tory cuts, leading to lengthy response times. We also saw a crisis in intensive care beds. On one occasion, there wasn't even a paediatric intensive care bed in the whole of the south of England. Last winter, the British Red Cross declared a humanitarian crisis for the NHS. Just let that sink in.
climate change threatens health through heat waves, flooding, advances in diseases. Indeed, two years ago, the Lancet Commission said that climate change threatens to reverse 50 years of advances in public health in this country and elsewhere. This government is being dragged, kicking and screaming, into acting on air pollution. 40,000 people are dying in this country every single year prematurely as a result of primarily traffic-related air pollution. Fuel poverty is also costing the NHS £1.3 billion every single year. Over in the East Riding and Hull, the CCG decided that they would bring in a company called Thames Ambulance, running patient transport services which are like non-essential ambulances. The CCG gave them the normal staffing budget, 5 million quid, and on the first payday, on Thursday, Staff were not paid their overtime and some of them weren't paid at all. And this happened up and down the country, everywhere where Tans, Thames Ambulance had a contract. If you can't pay your staff, you can't provide a service. So we are calling for the CCG to immediately terminate that contract and bring those people back where they belong into the NHS. I want to see you all raise your fists in solidarity with the nurses in the RCN who are talking about taking strike action. In solidarity with the cleaners at St. Bart's, mainly women workers from 43 different countries who walked out against privatisation. They're wanting health workers now to act as border police and check passports. There wouldn't be an NHS with a, without immigrants. I want to talk about sustainability and transformation plans. These are mechanisms that have been put in place under the five-year forward view and the result is going to be a reduction for the West Yorkshire Health budget of over £1 billion. In Kirklees alone, £200 million. In Calderdale, £76 million. £22 billion pound is about to be cut by this government. And yet NHS leaders said that they need £25 billion pounds for the NHS to stand still. NHS funding, I don't know if you know, is now at its lowest levels since the 1950s. £5 billion pound has been cut off social care by this government. We believe, because there's no legislation back in this, that there are grounds for judicial review on the sustainability and transformation plan's finances. 999 call for the NHS are starting a judicial review process. There's crowdfunding on the Crowd Justice website. We need to use every possible channel and mechanism to stop these cuts happening. general election is about the future of health services, of the welfare state, of education and of public transport. The whole future of this country and the National Health Service is now at stake. And our campaign says this, scrap the private finance initiative that drains five billion a year from the National Health Service. Reverse the sustainability and transformation plans and the 22 billion cuts. Re-nationalise the National Health Service. Decent pay for all of our NHS staff and end the use of agency staff and employ full-time NHS staff in our health service. That is our manifesto. Stop the cuts, stop the closures, stop the downgrades.